Welcome back to Mailbag Monday. Just getting myself prepared here. The beer of the day is... Uh, what is it now? Firehouse Ale. English Nut Brown Ale from Lake of the Woods Brewing in Kenora, Ontario. I think I've talked about this one before. And the fact that I'm having it again tells you all you need to know about it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, first victim headset, quantity one. It is in fact a headphone cable. I, I think I got another one of these, was it last time or the time before? Um, so basically this is just me stocking up because my kids are being hard on headphone cables and rather than replacing headsets every you know, couple of two or three times a year, I'm just or shortening the cables because this headphone wire is always a pain in the ass to solder. It's super fine, super flexible. Uh, it is enameled, insulated, and it just doesn't solder easily. These ones, I think you can see, are pre-tinned, which is nice. So I don't have to dick around too much. So it's just a nice quick replacement rather than messing around. Okay, let's go off to eBay and see how much I paid for this. Oh, and I hopefully, I know the last couple I've had pretty crappy audio on the computer stuff. So hopefully I've got it sorted. Let's find out, shall we? High quality 1.2 meter, 3.5 millimeter jack DIY headphone audio cable earphone maintenance wire. This one came from Mangofly. Uh, I paid $1.68 with free shipping. Okay, next in. We have finding with a part number and a different finding with a different part number. Hmm, I wonder what we'd be finding in this package. Arr, oh, come on. A padded thing and more of those itty bitty jumpers. Okay. Well, we looked at those last time, so we don't have to dig too deep into those. I'll look at the listing in a minute. And this is, hmm, this looks like a display module of some kind. It's kind of scratched up on the screen, but I'm thinking that's a little screen protector on there, or at least I hope it is. Either that or I'm scratching it even worse. Oh yeah, okay. It's got a screen protector. The only scratch is the one that I put on it. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, the in plus and minus. Couple labeled PWM. Oh, it's not a display module. We have frequency plus and minus and duty cycle plus and minus. This is some kind of a an, an square wave generator. Okay. Uh, ground TXD and RXD on this side, so I can presumably talk to it with an Arduino. But, okay. Well, that could be interesting. Okay, first of all, I've got this package from Stunner1975. Um, the actual links don't exist anymore. These only took about 10 weeks to get here, but they've been sitting in my uh, first in, first out buffer for a while. So th those links don't exist. I'm pretty sure I got them at auction. These test clips I got for $1.05. He's selling them for buck forty, buck fifty right now. So that's not a bad deal. About the same as what I paid for that other bunch uh, a few weeks ago. And the more interesting one, signal generator PWM pulse frequency duty cycle adjustable module LCD display times one from Stunner 1975. Currently, he's selling it for $5.12 Canadian. I bought it at auction for $3.22, but I can't find the actual listing from back then. Uh, so, what does it say here? 
I'll just frequency is adjustable from 1 hertz up to 150 kilohertz duty cycle 0 to 100 percent for PWM or for yeah okay you know just the frequency up and down the duty cycle up and down uh, it can take anything from three and a half to 30 volts in wow and it's got a TTL serial connection and down here it says pretty much the same things in a little bit bigger language uh, but oh it so it automatically saves the parameters and power down not lost that's good um, working voltage yes yeah, speed yeah accuracy about two percent that's not great but for just a low budget test lab it's not bad I guess it can uh, source up to about 30 milliamps that's kind of nice uh, wide range of temperatures I'm assuming the LCD is not going to like operating way down there oh it does have the communication stuff okay so 8N1 serial okay 9600 but at TTL okay so I suppose I could talk to that through uh, through or from an Arduino well of course I have to play with this thing don't I First, I'm going to peel that, that thing off so I can actually see the screen. That's better. So, I've got 5 volts coming in here. You know, I've got ye old cheap scope connected up there. So, we'll turn them on. So, the first thing that happens, it comes up in 100 hertz, I guess. Yeah, and 50% duty cycle. So let's wind this up to hmm, 500-ish. Okay, and what's Mr. Scope say? Well, that's a bit of a pain to read, isn't it? Let's uh, change the time base a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure whether you can read that or not, but up top there it says 503.01 hertz, um, and it has the it's 50% duty cycle, pretty close. A Vmax 5. Okay, so let's change the duty cycle on here. Let's take it up to eighty percent duty cycle. What's that look like? Oh yeah, there we go. Can you focus, please? Okay, let's uh, let's go to AC coupling, and no, that's too much there. Why is it not triggering? If you can see with the lighting. So that's kind of cool. I'm just going to wind the duty cycle back down here. There's 23%, so that's basically the opposite direction, and it's seeing 23% there too. That's excellent. Another addition for my cheap test equipment a signal source. Obviously, I could clock everything off one of my 555 timers but this is just quick and dirty for experimenting once I find out what frequency and duty cycle I want then I can hardware it with a 555 if I want to excellent next thing in expansion board module one of the few that's probably not lying Two things. Oh yeah, expansion board more. Yeah, two more. Excellent. So this one looks familiar because it is a nano. Which kind of nano is that? This nano is running on an, an Atmega or Atmel 328P. Cool. So it's the more modern one. I've got some. Uh, 
what are they, the older chip 168, something like that. They work fine for most things, but just a little bit more modern chip, and that's cool. So there's nothing special about it then, it's just a normal nano. That's kind of neat, they've got some capped on tape on top of the uh, connector. And was a CH340 on the bottom, just like I like them. And the other thing in that package, oh, it's one of these screw shield things. Okay. This one's unassembled. So, well, it's straightforward enough. Put those there. Put those there. Command, get on. And focus, damn it. There we go. And are these the type that, yeah, they are. They just clip together like that. And you put masses of them across the side of the board. That just makes a quick breakout. Okay. So let's go and uh, check those things for these ones. Nano V3.0 at Mega 328 CH340G 5V 16 megahertz terminal adapter controller board F Arduino from DIY Box. Right now, DIY Box is selling them for 539. I paid less than that. I paid 420 something. I think it was 428. Um, and where is my note? This one took about nine weeks to get here, so that's not horrible. Next in we have plastic accessory. Hmm. It's a cable. It's an HDMI, oh, a micro USB to HDMI adapter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. So that goes into phone or tablet. And that goes towards your large screen. Now, the reason I got this, last year during the hockey playoffs, I uh, had an app on my, on my tablet that let me watch the away games um, and the, the games that I wasn't interested in. Of course, the Jets were in it last year, so it was... Uh, their games we were getting on local TV, but some of them anyways. But the a lot of the Wii games we weren't. So, this is my solution for this year, so I won't have to have that problem again. Micro USB to HDMI adapter, 1080p, MHL, HDTV, cable for Samsung, Huawei, Sony, HTC, LG. From Mordash Things, I paid $3.10 for it, plus... 39 cents shipping. Oh my goodness, I must have been desperate. Uh, this took, uh, notes, notes, this took about 10 weeks to get here, which is not bad. And of course, it's been sitting in my pile for a while. Uh, what do we got down here? Many, many things. Designed for cell phones that use MHL version 1.0 technology. Turns your phone's MHL port into a standard HDMI port for HD playback. Watch movies, etc. Keep your phone charged while in use with the microphone. Oh, is there an, an SD? Oh, okay, I'll have to look at that. Um, that's cool, though. Supports resolution 1920 by by 1080, 60 hertz, and 192K digital audio. Supports up to 7.1 channels of surround sound. One more thing, I think. Expansion board module, it says. Oh, that's not very well packaged. <laughs> it's just USB breakouts for the... Which one is it? There we go, this one. Yeah, that's the, the Mini, so that... Okay, so I got that. I guess I originally ordered that probably for when I was, when I was testing my cables, which of course happened a long time ago and these hadn't showed up yet, so I just made do. So now, I guess they can be used for just power connectors for projects. 
5 pieces mini USB to dip 2.54 millimeter adapter converter for PCB board DIY power supply printed circuit board board hmm from world chips familiar name in my uh, shopping history here free shipping dollar 30 Canadian for the five of them and there's not much to see it's just the f the pins straight across to the pins all right here is the accumulated stuff from this mailbag Monday headphone repair cable more test clips USB breakouts another nano and the screw terminal shield board breakout kind of thing that's always going to be handy for experimenting this HDMI to USB adapter that is going to come in handy come hockey season I think and the latest piece of test equipment to be added to my ultra cheap test bench the square wave generator with PWM function noise Thank you once again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've got anything to say about any of this stuff, questions, comments, uh, anything like that, please let me know down in the, in the comment section. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping me finance my eBay addiction. Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.